Today at New Easter on Jaguar Gator 7, we're going to drop the first ever episode of Dumb Decisions for Baseball because something happened on Sunday that we need to talk about. Click the card in the upper right corner to join the channel now. And now, all of their feature presentation. About a year ago, I did a video on this man right here, Oakland Raiders quarterback and one of the greatest quarterbacks in the history of the American Football League the late, great Daryl LaMonica. In that video, I talked about a 1969 game that he had against the Cincinnati Bengals. You can learn more about that game and that performance by clicking the card in the upper right corner. However, I'll give a brief synopsis here without diving into the weeds too much. On December 6th, LaMonica had to check into the hospital following lingering back pain after taking a hit the previous week against the New York Jets. He was in so much pain that he couldn't get out of bed, and on Sunday morning, while the rest of the team was getting ready to play the Bengals, he was still in the hospital, with one nurse even going as far as saying that the Mad Bomber wouldn't be able to be checked out of the hospital until later in the week. Well, somehow, he not only made it out of the hospital later that Sunday, but went to the Oakland Coliseum, started the game, threw three touchdown passes, and guided the Raiders to a 37-17 victory. It was a truly remarkable performance on so many levels that exhibited the toughness and the grit of LaMonica. However, the crazy part about this is that this was not the first time that LaMonica was in the hospital the day of the game, came out of the hospital, and wound up starting and playing well and leading his team to victory. In fact, this wasn't even the first time in 1969 that this happened. If I had a nickel for every time in 1969 that Daryl LaMonica started a game after being confined to his hospital bed and then guided his team to victory, I'd have two nickels. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it's happened twice. Because one month before that incident against the Cincinnati Bengals, he had a similar incident against the San Diego Chargers were five hours before the game, he was in the hospital. And sure enough, he came back and played an amazing ball game, as only Daryl LaMonica could do. Because this is the story behind one of the craziest games in the storied career of Daryl LaMonica. Before I talk about the game in question, we need some context to understand the importance of this game, as well as how good LaMonica was looking thus far in the season. It's October 26, 1969. It's week 7 of the AFL season, and as we're approaching Halloween, and officially approaching the end of the first half of the year, we've got a big AFL West battle on our hands over at San Diego Stadium, between the Oakland Raiders and the San Diego Chargers. This game was both good and bad news for the Raiders on the surface. On one hand, they were looking like the best team in the league. They had the number one offense, which we'll get to in a bit, as they were averaging over 28.3 points per game, and they had the second best point differential in the league at plus 61, only behind the Kansas City Chiefs at plus 88. As a side note, to learn more about that 1969 Chiefs team that was so good, click the card in the upper right corner. Plus, the Raiders were undefeated coming into this one, sitting pretty with a 5-0-1 record. No other team in the AFL could say that. However, on the other hand, despite their great record, they truly had no room for error. Not only were the Kansas City Chiefs right behind them for the division lead at 5-1, but the San Diego Chargers were 4-2, just one win back of the Raiders. This was big, because only the top two teams in each division made the playoffs in 1969. Seems unfair that it was done like that instead of two wild cards with no ties to either division, seeing as the AFL West was a juggernaut and the AFL East was largely a joke outside of the Jets. But because of this, if the Raiders lost this game, then their playoff hopes, as crazy as it might seem, were somewhat dicey. The Raiders didn't have a whole lot of room for error and for slipping up especially since they kind of did that already by tying the winless NN at Miami Dolphins. They needed this win to keep a hold on their division lead at the halfway point, as well as to have some sort of cushion when it came to making the playoffs. 
And if they were going to win this game, well, it was going to come down to the play and the arm of the man that you've been watching this whole time. None other than Daryl LaMonica. By this point, in his third season in Oakland, Daryl LaMonica had established himself as one of the best quarterbacks in all of football, especially after a 1967 season where he led the NFL by throwing 30 touchdowns and by being named an AP First Team All-Pro after guiding the Raiders to an AFL championship and an appearance at Super Bowl II, which was their first Super Bowl in franchise history. But to start off the 1969 season, LaMonica, as you can tell from these highlights, was playing some of the best football of his entire career. Over his most recent four games before this one, he threw 15 touchdowns and just three interceptions, all while posting a passer rating in that stretch of 102.4. For some perspective on how good that was, in 1968, the average passer rating in the AFL was 62.6. And here was LaMonica, over his last month of play, nearly 40 points above the average. And if you don't believe me that he was that good, why don't you ask the Buffalo Bills? As in, the most recent team that LaMonica squared off against before this battle against the Chargers. Because one week before, on October 19th, LaMonica was coming off of arguably the greatest scheme of his career. As in a 50-21 victory, he threw six touchdown passes and 313 yards while posting a passer rating of 114.9. Oh, and all six touchdown passes came in the first half. If he wanted to, and if head coach John Madden would have let him, he could have thrown his head. He was that good. Oddly enough, I talked about that game in depth as it pertained to a bizarre broadcasting controversy involving Haiti. So if you want to learn more about that game and just how good LaMonica was in it, you can do so by clicking the card in the upper right corner. By this point in 1969, heading into the halfway point of the season, LaMonica was on top of the world, and it seemed like nothing could possibly take him down. LaMonica even said as much, saying, This is the best I felt this season. I knew that once I started feeling better, my play would improve. And then, it all came crashing down. Because in preparation for the game against the Chargers, and what might have been their biggest game of the season at the time considering the circumstances, something fell off. Something didn't quite feel right with LaMonica. The day before the game, while he was with the Raiders and getting ready for the game the next day, he started feeling very sick. As LaMonica said on how bad he felt, I had the chills and threw up several times. They called the doctor and took me to the hospital. And when LaMonica went to the hospital, it was worse than anyone thought. Not only was he dealing with throwing up and chills, but he was dealing with an extremely high 103 degree fever. That's way around the temperature where you're seeking immediate medical attention. And if it goes any higher, you're in a potentially dangerous situation. LaMonica was sore beyond belief, as one is when you're dealing with a fever. He was bedridden. He was unable to eat anything and he felt absolutely terrible. Not even 24 hours before kickoff, the Raiders were expecting to go into this game with someone else under center, and were probably going to have for a lie on their 42-year-old signal caller, George Blanda. No way could a quarterback on a hospital bed the night before in San Diego, so it's not like he knows any of the people there, possibly play the following day, right? And this was looking more and more likely when the game was supposed to start at 1 o'clock, and with 5 hours to go before kickoff, at 8 a.m., LaMonica still found himself in the hospital, confined to his bed. Again, I want you to imagine the last time you had a fever. And now, imagine that 5 hours later, you're out there running full speed and playing a contact sport, all after not eating for an entire day, and feeling absolutely terrible and exhausted. It just doesn't seem possible. It just doesn't. And that's especially true when you consider the fact that from Saturday to Sunday, LaMonica lost eight pounds because of his lack of an appetite and because of his sweat. He was that sick. However, here's the absolutely crazy part about all of this. 
as you might have been able to guess. La Monica was a warrior. La Monica was a fighter. He was going to do everything in his power to play in the ski, no matter how sick he was, and no matter how awful he might have been feeling. He thought he suffered food poisoning, but it turned out to be a 24-hour virus instead, which was the best case scenario, even though it still stinks. And with his fever partially gone because of that, even though he still had somewhat of a temperature since it doesn't just go away automatically, he went out of the hospital and went straight to San Diego Stadium. La Monica was still feeling like crap. As he said, I've had nothing to eat since yesterday, but I thought I could do the job. He added on that, I barely warmed up. I wanted to conserve my strength for the game. All La Monica did before the game was have a soft drink. That was it. No warm-ups, no pre-game meal, or any meal in the last 24 hours for that matter. La Monica just told John Madden to put him in, and he would figure it out. Even though not even five hours before, he was confined to his hospital bed and had to be tended to by medical professionals. Which raises the obvious question. How on first would La Monica perform in a scheme? Again, the Chargers' pass defense was no walk in the park. This was a team that had won four straight games, and a pass defense that, over its last three games, had allowed just 298 passing yards, or under 100 per game. This was a pass defense that was a turnover machine, finishing the year second in interceptions, only one behind the Kansas City Chiefs for first place. This was a pass defense that, in its last game against the Boston Patriots, held starting quarterback Mike Talaferro to a completion percentage of just 44% and a passer rating of 33.7, which is worse than if he did nothing but spike the ball to the ground on every single play. You're watching how good this pass defense is right now. This was a pass defense that, over its last three games, held opposing quarterbacks to a completion percentage of 48%, and a passer rating of just 54.8. And now, La Monica was going to have to go up against this defense despite having not eaten in over 24 hours, despite not warming up, despite being sick, and despite being in the hospital just moments before kickoff, not expecting whatsoever to play. And yet, as you could tell, La Monica played out of his mind, because of course he did. Would you expect anything less from the Mad Bomber? Because when all was said and done, the Raiders won this game over their in-state rival by a final score of 24-12, keeping their undefeated season alive and keeping their hold on first place in the division. And sure enough, while there were many reasons for Oakland's success, including an incredible pass defense that forced four interceptions, including three courtesy of Dave Grayson, and held John Hales with a completion percentage of just 26% as he went 12 for 45, one of the biggest reasons was the play of Daryl LaMonica, who was still an extremely effective quarterback despite being sick. He didn't take any sacks, as he did a great job getting rid of the ball quickly, efficiently, and effectively. He went 19 for 26, completing over 73% of his passes, which was not just his highest total of the season, but was the second highest total of his entire career in a game that he started. As in the 88 starts he made over his career, the only start better from a completion standpoint was the year before in 1968 against the Cincinnati Bengals, when in a 34-0 win, he completed 75% of his passes by going 24 for 32. Who would have thought that the second best game of his career completion-wise would be a game where he was definitely sick. And on top of that, he threw three touchdown passes, with one being from 48 yards out in the first quarter to Larry Todd, one being from 16 yards out in the second quarter to Warren Wells, and one being from 15 yards out in the third quarter to Roger Hagberg. Three touchdowns, 73% completion percentage, a win, and 237 yards, all while being hospitalized and bedridden five hours beforehand, all while feeling too sick to warm up and while not having had anything to eat for more than 24 hours beforehand, and all while losing eight pounds in 24 hours. 
Not a bad day at the office, if I do say so myself. Daryl LaMonica is one of the greatest quarterbacks of the 1960s, and is one of the greatest quarterbacks in the long and storied history of the Raiders franchise. And if there's any one game and any one performance that truly exhibits this and highlights just how good he was and just how tough he was, it's this 1969 game against the Chargers. Because on this day in 1969, even though it somehow worked out, the Mad Bomber was truly mad to play in this one. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.